Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Steve Ludwig, President and CEO of Select Insurance Group and The Insurance Man. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about some theories of how to be able to trip an ignition interlock device. So, as you're seeing here, this is a real uh, sample of an ignition interlock device. Obviously, this is not plugged in. But basically what this does is this is a measure on your blood alcohol content, which ultimately people are required to put on their vehicles after a DUI or subsequent offense. And what this does, it measures your blood alcohol content. If you read a certain blood alcohol content, then this device that you blow into will then not start the vehicle. So you would, uh, you would have to also, um, as you're driving the vehicle, there are systematic time frames to where you have to blow back into the device you hum into the device blow into it uh, everybody you know it, it's a little different based on the companies but most of them are all the same you do all those things um, and then what this is going to do is it registers that if it finds that you trip the device or it doesn't end up working um, then obviously there are other it locks you out and your car would shut off and then that obviously reports to whoever your probation officer is. If you failed the test, um, obviously that reports to your probation officer as well here too. But uh, this one, like I said, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go off camera here for a minute. We have a couple of the main ones that uh, a lot of people feel are going to alter the results. So the first one we have here is we have mouthwash. So mouthwash, a lot of people think that mouthwash is going to change the scenario on here we'll go through and we'll check that out peanut butter we'll also look at bubble gum specifically wintergreen bubble bubble gum hot sauce um, now there's also guys there's been reports that people have put grass in their mouth there's a person that put feces in their mouth you nasty we do not recommend you do these things uh, this is just purely to just show or to debunk the results that this is going to alter the ignition interlock in any way. We do not recommend drinking and driving, so I want to put all the disclaimers out there that this is not for anything more than just fun uh, to just show you that these things do not in fact work. I specifically recommend that you do not put feces or sticks or anything of the sort in your mouth. Stop it. Get some help. Uh, to be able to throw off of it. Uh, this ignition interlock device and then in addition to that uh, I recommend just not drinking and driving period that you arrive alive that you designate a responsible driver somebody that has not had anything to drink uh, to be able to drive you around if you're going to go out and celebrate have a few drinks uh, for the night so we're going to get to the test here real quick we'll be back soon in the interim of that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drink up here and uh, we're going to see what these test results say this is one shot Jim Beam uh, this is a 80 proof uh, Kentucky distilled bourbon. Uh, it's a, like I said, 80 proof, 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, so bottoms up. All right, so they have one shot of the Kentucky distilled bourbon. bourbon. Of the Kentucky distilled bourbon. bourbon. Uh, that's not me slurring speech or anything at this point. This is just one shot on here, right? So, uh, one shot of the Jim Beam uh, bourbon. And uh, first one that we did on here, first I registered on here, I had a 0.02 alcohol by volume. Now, in some states, I'm just speaking upon Missouri, um, that if you have a, such as like a CDL license or you're under the age, of 18, um, excuse me, under the age of 21, you um, your alcohol by volume has to be less than 0.04. So that would essentially be really two drinks. Um, but really, Missouri and a lot of other states don't have a tolerance for it altogether. If you're drinking, you're and you're driving, you're in trouble. So they'll find a way to be able to get you in trouble. Um, just don't drink and drive, right? But anyway, I registered 0.02 on this device. Okay, so I would blow into this device. Um, on the regular, if I was driving, uh, I would have to continue to kind of like into the device and I would have to uh, register whatever that was in there. So the first thing on here we tried was Listerine. Listerine had uh, no effect on these things. Uh, Listerine is one of the, 
it, it actually, uh, I'm surprised it didn't actually make more alcohol content since it has alcohol in there, um, but it didn't have any effect on that. So we're gonna try number two, which is gonna be Jif peanut butter. So the results are in. After number two, uh, Jif peanut butter. No difference in result. So Jif peanut butter is a fail. We're still at 0 .02. Uh, I've not drank any more, taken any additional shots. Um, though by the end of this video, there's no guarantees of what could be happening here. So the third one on here is gonna be wintergreen gum. We're gonna check that out real quick and see exactly what the results are. The number three result, Orbit Gum, had no effect on the blood alcohol content. Uh, Orbit Gum, this was wintergreen. Uh, it supposedly is supposed to alter what your test shows in there, and it did absolutely nothing. So, third, or excuse me, fourth one. Test results should be going up here any moment now. So, um, the fourth one, and I'm really not looking forward to, is uh, hot sauce, picante sauce. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a shot of hot sauce, which... We do not recommend you do this at home or work, uh, specifically at work. This is some hot shit, so uh, just don't do it, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to down this and Nick and everybody else here is gonna enjoy my misery as I'm taking a shot of hot sauce, okay? So, bottoms up. You win, Chuck. Guys. <laughs> Ooh. It is not good. I'm literally sweaty now. And the fourth test result, um, other than making it mis making me miserable, uh, that had no bearing on the effect of what the blood alcohol content read on the device. So, as you see here, these are the four. Now, there are other ones, like I said, um, putting feces in your mouth. You nasty. Okay, um, personally, as a cop, if I was a cop, if somebody was willing to put crap in their mouth, um, I, I probably would give them a ride home. But uh, that's obviously not something that we recommend and uh, not something I'm going to make an example of here. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> uh, we're just going to stick with these main four that are supposed to alter things. Uh, there's also... Uh, where people have said, well, you just don't blow with your diaphragm. Well, that's part of the whole humming process. I'm still feeling this hot sauce in my mouth, um, and it is extremely hot. So they, we want to debunk that theory that anything is going to be changed. Again, we don't want you guys to be out there drinking and driving. Be responsible. If you're going to drink, it's not hard. Call yourself an Uber or a Lyft. Call yourself a friend. Somebody is going to be able to get you home. Plan ahead of time so that you don't get in trouble. Because DUIs, let's just face it, guys, are expensive. Okay? And nobody wants to put this device in here. This is definitely not going to help your dating game in any way, shape, or form. If you're having to sit here and blow into this thing, do not have other people blow into the device for you. Because these devices, what they do is they measure your blood alcohol content. And they look at the frequency that is in the blood alcohol content. They look at what your lung capacity is and a couple of other things. And the system is ultimately going to know if you're trying to screw with it, if you're trying to be able to con the system, it's going to find out. So just don't do it, okay? Just don't do it. It's a lot better for you. I recommend it for your, uh, you know, your, your privilege to be able to drive is one that can be taken away. It's one that, you know, you can ultimately hurt other people by being out there on the road. We just don't want to have you guys do that. So anyway, the other thing here I want to talk to you guys about is making sure that you have a reliable, in, uh, that you have a reliable company for your ignition interlock, okay? There are lots of companies out there to choose from, okay? One of the companies that we have partnered together with, we know that creates quality products and they do everything. This is like kind of the base model product on here, but this is in Toxalock, okay? In Toxalock, if you actually go to select sr22insurance.com forward slash in Toxalock, you will find a link that will give you additional savings mechanisms for yourself as you go online to be able to register to have one of these installed in your vehicle. If you're going to have to have one installed, you want to use a company like in Toxalock because 
and Toxilock is a quality company. You don't want to have a device that's ultimately going to be cheap, that's going to misfire, lock you out, cause problems for you, and ultimately you land in the same position that you were in before, which is in trouble. Nobody wants to have that happen. So even if you have to spend a few extra additional dollars, you want to make sure that you have a quality piece of machinery while you have to have this ignition interlock device in your car to make sure that not only you're protected, but the general public is protected as well too. So this was my test of the ignition interlock to show you guys that you are not able to ultimately stump the ignition interlock devices. We hope that you found some good content in here. Um, a reminder again, disclaimers wise, we don't recommend drinking and driving. We don't recommend that um, you put hot sauce in your mouth or peanut butter or crap or Orbit gum or anything of the sort in there. We don't recommend that you do that, especially to trip an ignition interlock device. Um, and you probably don't want to drink at 10 o'clock in the morning like I'm doing right now. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, we hope you've enjoyed this video. For other videos, visit us at selectsr22insurance.com or follow us online on uh, YouTube or Facebook, Select Insurance Group. Make sure to throw a like at us and then be sure to follow us as well for other informative videos. On here, there you go. what about flex cam? No, 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 stop. <laughs> stop. Hit up a flex cam again. Flex cam number three. Ah, okay. It was awful. <laughs> that was awful with that chaser. <laughs> Ooh, that burns. All right. <laughs> All right. Can we get the flex cam real quick? Go out here. Uh... Are we allowed to like really, are we supposed to be drinking on at work? No, <laughs> no probably, not. probably not. Okay. We won't tell the boss, right? <laughs> okay, it's a... I guess if you're the boss, it has its perks, right? It has perks. Okay.